Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So good morning everybody. So we have a couple things to talk about today. An ESC tester, a DIY ESC tester slash motor tester, a Skyzone goggle, a Iomwe V3. Yes, it's my V3. It's modded. Um, I want to sell this by the way, 200 bucks anybody. I bought this for 400 bucks. You could easily revert the mod. Everything is right here in this box. So yeah. Anyways, out of the question, because I don't, I don't want it. I don't. I, to be honest, I don't like the Iomwe. I just don't like it. It's not for me. Um, so let's get started. So if you've noticed, yesterday I did a live stream, but I didn't upload a video right after I part and I removed the live stream. Well, I just removed it because I just wanted to remove it. I, some that's just a really bad habit of mine. Sometimes nothing happened in that live stream. We didn't say anything wrong, but just. I don't know, it's a really bad habit. Anyways, let's move on. So yesterday I didn't upload a video. And why didn't I upload a video? Well, because I was building this, okay? First, I did a prototype with an Arduino, a big Arduino and a breadboard. It worked fine. I worked on the code. It worked beautiful. Then I went ahead and switched it over to Arduino Nano, make sure the code worked, see where the wires, the wires kind of changed a little bit. And then I decided to build the prototype before actually proceeding with the video. So I went ahead and did that. And I'll, I'll discuss what this is in a little bit right now. What happened was it worked perfect, but then when I added the external battery with the voltage regulator into the circuit, I burnt the Arduino and the OLED. And this is the only OLED I have for this size. I have bigger ones. Not so big, but a little bit bigger. But I really wanted this because I just got it to work perfectly nice. Uh, so that's fine. So we're going to end up using a bigger OLED. But let's discuss what this thing can actually do. Sorry, I'm not looking at you guys. I still need to practice. So what this is, is obviously see this little potentiometer. This is to control the speed of the ESC or the motor. And the way this works is really nice and simple. It's very well thought out. You get these two terminals here. Uh, these will be the power to your ESCs. And you get these pins that are sticking up right there. That's where if you when that's okay, let's just show you. So here's the power. You would stick those in those blue terminals right there. Okay. And then this is the signal of the ESC. You would stick that there. Okay ground goes out and we'll just make sure we mark those and you just put in a battery you could go ahead and calibrate this also so you have to set the potentiometer to 100 percent right out of the box plug in the battery it'll calibrate the esc drop it down to zero to finish the calibration beeps and to confirm it to confirm that it's been calibrated and you can go ahead and start you know uh increasing and decreasing the throttle so it worked fine um, but like I mentioned, when I added the external circuit, I burnt the Arduino when I was just powering it off a of USB is working fine, but that's totally fine. I'm making a newer version right now, uh, with a bigger screen. Now you might say, well, I mean, I really liked the small screen, but while I was online, cause I had a little issue with the displaying the analog input, uh, from the digital pin. Um, I was just going through online, just searching what, what the hell's really going on here. Cause I haven't programmed C in a while. And um, what I found out, I, I saw basically a guy who had a nice, sick gauge, like, 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 oh, coded, you know, like a nice little template. I'll leave a link to everything down below. So I'm going to just take that template and then make it, you know, look really nice. It has like a little gauge and the number in the middle. So you know what throttle you're on. Just a little eye candy. There's no need for it, but it just makes it look super damn awesome. That's just me. So that's going to be upcoming in a little bit. On a couple hours, actually, I'm going to start on it right now, <clears throat> the newer version. It shouldn't take that long. It's not that complicated if you look at the back here. And um, I use this really, really thin solid core, maybe 26 gauge or 28 gauge wire. Uh, it just comes like this. It's just trillion. There's, It's not strands. It's just one. And it's like really, really um, thin, like super thin. It's, re it's really nice, actually. It's, it's not a good quality, but it's really good. It works great, actually. Well, I think it's good, decent quality because it works great. So that's one thing. Another thing, Iomwe V3s, just kidding. They're not the V3s. They're the V1s that are modded or V2s that are modded. So um, I really don't want this. Email me if you're interested. Um, you could easily revert the mod right back to whatever it is. Just slide the thingies in and just plug in the connector and you get your internal modules back on. There was nothing done in that perspective. Uh, I did strengthen the power inside of it because... Iomwe isn't the best of quality. I didn't notice that at first, but after I went back and tried to fix it, because what happened is when I was doing the mod video on this guy, when I opened it, I ripped the power cable, which is these little thin shitty cables. I don't have one next to me. And um, I looked online. And I don't think, I, I don't know. I gave up or something was out of stock or they wouldn't ship to me. And I just left it. Now I knew it worked, but on the video, I couldn't show you it worked because after I tested it and then I went to open it again to show you again, I popped that off. 
So I just decided to fix it. I ran two stronger wires straight from the DC input all the way to the main board here and gave it power. Now I don't have to worry about it when I take it apart or breaking anything inside. So <clears throat> that's something uh, was done to this and now it's working a lot better and it's completely reversible. You could tuck these little wires in. This is the power for your fat shark module and this is the video. So if you guys want to see an update video on this, I can go ahead and do that and show you the, the, the fix that I did inside to bypass that issue or if that issue has happened to you before. <clears throat> for example, if for some reason you wanted to uh, uh, open your goggle to fix it and then you rip that cable, it's a really simple fix. You just got to take power from the DC and pi pipe it to the first tantalum capacitor where that wire would go. And if you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comment section. Obviously, pause the video and everything that I'm talking about if you have a comment down below so we know where to take it from there. So... I just received like maybe an hour ago the sky zones now i've been playing with them little micro here in the shop nothing too big nothing not, i haven't really fully tested them just yet but i did test the previous ones now they would have like i mentioned before they would have completely replaced my fat shark but they just couldn't because of the nose issue the nose issue was really bad this one is improved dramatically so let me explain it to you to put it on a perspective of scale i'll do have a separate video for this coming up very soon so on a perspective of a scale, the first one's nose issue or comfort or ease of, I mean, just the way it feels and how, how it was on your face, out of 10, 10 being the best, it was like a three, okay, three, four if I'm being nice. It was like a three. It was really annoying. Um, this one is, I would say, around seven, uh, a little bit less than seven, like a 6.8. Eight. That's what it, just, it feels right to me. It's, it's not that it's not good. It's good. I have a pretty big nose, as you can tell right there. So when I put this on, it's it's pretty decent. Um, but I still get a little bit of hit right there, but not as bad as it was before. Uh, you probably while you're flying, you probably get used to it, but it's not super comfortable. And it, but it's uh, I don't know how it is in the long run to be honest. I'm not gonna go and and just say something that I don't know. But. For me, I could totally see the insides perfect. And there's something where it excels a little bit more than the Fat Shark to me um, in terms of the visuals. Now, I, haven't, I still haven't put them, I haven't tried them like, you know, one by one like this just yet because I only have one battery right now that's charged. Um, the, the, the focal adjustment, the IPD, I can get it perfect with this. With the Fat Shark, there was always that little blur on one of the sides, you know, like I had to put one like this and one like this or, you know, one like this and then yeah, have the eyes try to make up what's in the middle. But it's not that bad. It might seem bad that I'm saying it. I still love my my HD3s. I, I love them to death. Um, can This one, um, it's perfect view, like an absolute perfect view. I really do like the camera, actually, this camera. I think it's very useful. I actually, I was just using it right now, walking around the shop. So it's very useful to me. Um, but uh, I wish they just sucked a little, just cut a little bit of part of that nose off a little. I mean, let me just see where it, where it really hits. It hits like right here. Okay. It just does not allow it to sit flush, but it's perfect eye level. So that's really nice. And, uh, if your eyes... If your, if your nose is a little bit lower, like if your nose started from down here, I, I think there's humans that have noses maybe that kind of start like that. Mine's a bit bigger than the average nose, I think. You'll be totally fine. So, uh, but if your nose is bigger than mine, then you have a pretty big nose and uh, this is not recommended for you. I, c I can tell you that. Unless your nose is big from the bottom. Uh, that's something, you know. But um, if, you, if you have a nice little nose, this is going to fit perfect. And the screen is super awesome. I was literally ready to switch over last time. And um, I, I just couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, this one, I still don't know how it is in the field just yet. So when I go fly the other quadcopters, this is what I'll be flying with. And um, I think I should make some kind of a, a voice overlay. When I fly the quad as well as talk about the goggles that I'm using. So that's going to be pretty nice. Uh, compared to the Ion Waves. So compared to the Ion Waves, sorry guys, I think the audio is just going to be completely ruined now. Uh, because the PC crashed for some reason. System service exception. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, these are way better than the Ion Ways. In my opinion. The Ion Ways are just shitty quality. Because uh, lately I just, when I opened it and just really looked into it. I don't want to say shitty, I just want to say not the best of quality. But again, there's a huge price difference. So yeah, I just remember these are 500 bucks. Are they worth 500 bucks? I think they're worth 400 to be honest. 
38400 um, you know I, I don't want them to be that expensive but I mean that's the market and you know can't do nothing about it but there's a huge difference I mean the internals are very nice the the the, the camera there's no ghosting effects there's none of that bullshit it's just hardcore good LCDs inside that look really really nice um, possibly a little bit better than the fat sharks but don't take my word just yet until I actually put them side by side in the field because that's where it really counts uh, here we can totally just put it on our face and see it, but then you know when you're in the field you put it on, you're sweating, you're moving, you're pushing up, putting it down, then you really get a feel for it. Um, but overall, it looks nice. I cannot wait to go out and test this guy. So thank you SkyZone. So we'll see how well this does. Um, I'll leave a link to everything down below if you're curious. And I'm thinking of a second build, oh I just broke the propeller, of the drone mesh split sane. So with some HDLRC motors. Or some RCN Power 1108, we could try those out. Those look pretty damn crazy. Uh, so maybe we'll try those out. And well, I think that's it, guys. So I do apologize for about the audio, depending on how much of it I could actually save and how much I couldn't save. And um, yeah, well, that's it, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in a couple hours. Peace out.